Okay, we're gonna look at solving a system of inequalities. System meaning more than one. Um, and with a system, we're looking for where two lines overlap with an inequality. We're now looking for where two shaded regions overlap with each other. Because we have two, we're gonna do these in two different colors. First one, we're gonna look at in green. Uh, like any quadratic, you'll always wanna start off finding the axis of symmetry. What is that formula for that? x equals negative b over 2a. That needs to be in the, always in the picture here. So when we start plugging numbers in, uh, my b value, number in front of x, negative 2. So we're going to have a negative, negative 2. One negative comes from the formula. The second negative comes from the number. 2 times a, which is in front of x squared. In this case, it's going to be negative 1. When we simplify that, you're going to get 2 over negative 2, which is negative 1. When we find that axis of symmetry, we're going to now create a t-chart. And that negative 1 goes right in the middle of that t-chart. From there, we need to find numbers smaller. We need to find numbers larger. What's smaller than negative 1? Negative 2 and negative 3. And then larger, 0 and 1. So the one thing that we know about uh, parabolas there are numbers repeat themselves or, or y values are going to repeat themselves so instead of plugging in negative three negative two into this e inequality i'm going to use these bottom numbers why zero i just don't like the negatives zeros are easier to deal with and all that nonsense so let's start plugging some numbers in we have y greater than negative start on the bottom down here 1 squared minus 2 times 1 plus 2. Now, we can kind of ignore the greater than sign. It doesn't really matter any way. We just want to kind of figure out what this number is down here. So order of operations. 1 squared is 1. Bring down the negative. Negative 2 and 1. Negative 2 plus. These guys cancel out, leaving you with just negative 1. So because we have a parabola, if this is negative 1, our answer up here is going to be negative 1. Uh, we got to do this all again, but this time, instead of plugging in 1, we'll use 0. So 0 squared is going to give us 0 minus 0 plus 2, which is just 2, and we repeat our answer up there. One last time. Negative 1 squared, positive 1, but we got this negative out here. Bring it down. Negative, negative, positive, bring down the 2. 4 minus 1 gives us 3. And there you go. So we now have our t-chart. We'll come back to that. And let's come up with all the information for the, uh, for the second inequality. We'll use this one in blue. And then we'll come back and we'll graph together. So first we need to find the axis of symmetry. Negative 2 over 2 times my a value in front, negative 1, giving us negative 2 over negative 2, which is just 1. So let's create a t-chart over here. Put that 1 in the middle. Now we need to fill in the rest of those x values. What are numbers smaller? What are numbers larger? So smaller, 0, negative 1, larger, 2, and 3. I want to take these five numbers now and plug them into this. So y less than or equal to negative, negative 1 squared, 2 and negative 1, and 3. Okay, order of operations. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive, but we have a negative. Bring it down. 2 and negative 1, negative 2. And a 3, which is going to give us a 0. What number did we plug in? Negative 1. So we get the zero there. Good, let's do it again, but this time with negative one, one of the best numbers we can plug in. Why? Because everything just cancels out and you're left with that three. Okay. And last, one and one. One times one, one squared is one. Bring down the negative, two, three, giving us four. Awesome. And then what do we know about these other two numbers on the bottom? Well, they're going to start repeating themselves. So three, zero. 
Great. We don't need any of this anymore. Now we need to graph. So going back to first problem that we did in green, I want to plot all these points. So every time you plot a point, we're moving in the X direction first, which is left and right, and then the Y up and down. So let's go backwards three. Let's go down one. Let's go back two, up two. Go back one, up three. And then over zero, up two. And over one, down one. All right, so this part is just like a regular or just like a regular quadratic. Here's where things change. When you're dealing with a quadratic, you're either going to have a solid line or a dashed line. In this case, there's no equal sign here, so we're going to have to have a dashed line. So when we connect these, just dash them. Okay, so along with solid and dash, there is something else that goes along with this, and that's going to be shading. We're going to shade either inside or outside. So how do we do that? Well, we have to pick a point, any point, find something on this graph that we can read. Now, I could pick a coordinate way out here. I could pick a coordinate way in here. I like going on the inside. Why? Well, really, not just the inside. I like using 0, 0. So I'm going to take this coordinate, 0, 0, and I'm going to substitute it in everywhere I see x and y. So is 0 bigger? Or is it greater than negative 0 squared minus 2 times 0 plus 2? So now let's simplify this all again. Uh, 0 minus 0 plus 2, 2, and a 0. Is 0 greater than 2? That statement, no. That doesn't make sense. This statement is false. So that means this coordinate is false. When you're dealing with uh, shading, it's either going to be inside, outside, this side, that side, over here, over there. If it's not in here, we're going to shade outside. So what I'm going to do before I kind of shade everything, I'm just going to kind of give myself an idea of where I'm shading. I'm going on the outside over here. So when we put the other graph in, we can kind of, figure out an easier point. So get rid of that. And let's do this all again with the second inequality. All right, let's plot these points. Back one, up zero. Over zero, up three. Over one, up four. Over two, up three. And then three zero now before we connect these we got to ask is it going to be a solid or dashed line because we have an equal sign that's got to be a solid line all right now we got to shade we got to pick a point any point as long as that point's not on our blue line so for right now pretend that green line doesn't even exist blue is all we're looking for so i could pick a coordinate inside i could pick a coordinate way out here way out there. It doesn't really matter. Inside, outside. I'm going to go inside. Why? Because it's the zero, zero that I like. So let's take that and substitute that in. Is zero less than or equal to negative zero squared plus two times zero plus three, giving us zero, zero, and three. Is zero smaller than three? Yes, that statement makes sense. So that means this statement makes sense. That also means everything on the inside of the blue graph is going to get shaded in. So I'm shading in all of this area. Okay, now I have to ask myself, where does blue and green both overlap? Well, if I look out here, I only have green. All of this doesn't help me. I don't have blue and green being shaded. I want to know where they both shade. Um, just this portion only has 
blue inside. So this doesn't mean anything to me. But then what happens about this little area? Well, here I've got green going this way. I got blue going that way. This is my colored area. That's what's going to kind of get filled in. And we want to exaggerate with where the shaded region is. So don't just leave it with those little dash marks or half filled in. Let's really color it in so we have no mistake as to what is the overlapped region. So the solution to a system of inequalities is where our two inequalities uh, meet each other. And in this case, the two lines or the two inequalities both meet in this shaded region. So any coordinate in this colored in area would be an answer, would be a solution. And that is solving a system of inequalities.